back with us early yes, this morning. Absolutely. Hopefully you have settled the family in, you have something amazing to drink, mm. and you are ready to dig into the Word of God. Yes. We are ready to share with you. We have an amazing lineup today. Yes, and it's time to rise. Welcome back. Last night was so good. <sighs> Delicious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Mia brought the word. Yes, ma'am. Don sang us right into ministry. Yes, ma'am. And we have a full morning packed for you. Yes. So grab your girlfriend. Yes. Send a text. Absolutely. Text yeah. them, call them, DM, whatever it is that you do. Mm -hmm. But get someone to join you because this is going to be so good. You're going to want someone to share it with later on. Oh my on. God. You want to be yeah. texting like, did you hear yeah. what she said? I oh can't my goodness, I can't yes. believe it. You know, one of the things that we want women to remember this morning is absolutely as you are rising, right? Good morning. It is time to rise. rise. As you are rising, our foundational scripture for the weekend mm -hmm. is John, is 3 John, yeah. 3 John, yeah. 2, and it says this, the word of God is free. Mm -hmm. And we say this all the all time. time. Yep, all the time. <laughs> and someone said, well, Kira, the Bible's not free. It does cost me money. Okay. It, download the app. Absolutely. The point is this. We purchase all kinds of things oh. all the time right? This coffee. I mean, how much did we spend on the coffee? But we have something in our minds mm -hmm. about when it's time to spend time with God. Yeah. The Bible is free. It costs you zero. Mm -hmm. It costs you nothing. It only costs you time. Yeah. But the word is so rich mm -hmm. and it's so full. It's so satisfying. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the only thing that will sustain you. Absolutely. And there's something in this book mm -hmm. for every situation. Every situation. Every single situation is covered. It's all in there. Yeah, it's in there. And if you can take time to rise with us today, our challenge mm -hmm. is that tomorrow that you take time to rise with God. Yes. And every single day of your life, there's something in this book for you. Mm -hmm. So don't just take our word for it. Spend some time with God. Spend some time with God. Yeah. So 3 John, our foundational scripture, uh, it says this. And this is what John is writing, and he's writing it to a gentleman named Gaius. Mm -hmm. And he says, Gaius, whom I love in truth. And we talked about that, Gwen. <laughs> like, is there another way to love? Ugh. But I think this is the purest, yeah. right? The most authentic way to love. And so clearly there's a deep compassion and, mm -hmm. and just relationship there, yeah. which, is, which is what we're seeking for you all Absolutely. to have with the Father. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what God wants. Absolutely. He wants relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because, you know, we have in our minds what we're going to say before we press play and before we go on our lives. But the little thing that happens oh. is we've already invited God. Yeah. So then God actually shows up yeah. and he starts saying yeah. what he wants you to saying hear. Saying what needs to be said yeah. for the person who's, who's tuning who's in. Who's tuning in. So when you said relationship, mm -hmm. something in me just jumped. Oh, for sure. Because that's what God wants with us. You think about 2020. If you didn't have a relationship with God when you were locked in your home, oh when you were trying to figure out if you had COVID, when you were walking through losing your job, when you were trying to pivot for financial reasons, when you were looking mm -hmm. for a place to, to just seek refuge, yeah. that thing called relationship, oh, sure. yeah. that came into play. Oh, for sure. Oh my gosh. I think if ever there's been a time for us to draw close, it's been now. Yeah. And and I hope and pray that regardless of what you have experienced, you have come to know the Father yeah. just as that, yeah. a daddy. Yeah. I mean, we see him as God. Mm -hmm. We know he's judge and yeah. he's ruler and he's all of these things. But at the core and at the center of his heart, he's, he's a daddy. He is, yeah. he is our Father yeah. and he wants nothing more than for us to be full and happy, but to be in relationship, relationship with, with him. him. Yeah. yeah, that's what he yeah. wants. He wants us to be in relationship with him. So if you are watching this morning and you do not have a relationship with God, or maybe your relationship because of how your year has gone has mm -hmm. been in the tank. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you've walked away from God. Yeah. Maybe you stopped trusting God because something happened mm -hmm. and you decided if God's so good, mm -hmm. why is he allowing right. this? Right. So maybe your faith is wayward yeah. right now. And, and you know, that's a real thing, Kira. Yes. Like we face challenges in Absolutely. life. I have been there. Yeah. I've been there where I'm like, you know what? I don't know about all of this. Yeah. I think I'll just, I'll take a rain check, yeah. you know? But at the end of the day, the relationship that I'd established with him, mm. 
drew me right back yes. to understand that there is no greater love. No greater love. There is no greater love. There is no greater father, no greater compassion yeah. than his. Yeah. And no matter what state I find myself in, I may be knocked off my horse, so Come to speak, on, for a yeah. moment. Yeah. I might get a little wobbly. Yeah. Uh, I, I might become doubtful. I might become fearful. You know, all of these things, I might become them. Let's let's just be real. You know, anxiety has been at an all-time yeah. high. Oh Many of us who maybe never even experienced it before have yeah. for the first time. But no matter what the state yeah. I find myself in, there is a place. Yeah. It's called his bosom, Yes, ma'am. his chest, mm -hmm. his arms that I always find sweet rest, yeah. comfort, consolation, peace, yeah. reassurance. Yeah, reassurance. That everything is, is gonna be okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. And that happens in relationships. Yeah, it that does. Yeah. So the scripture, <laughs> see, and, and see how all of that came from just me talking about the word? Imagine if you spent time with yeah. it every day, yeah. what it would do for yourself. For sure. So three John, 3 John, he's talking to Gaius. He says, to the beloved Gaius, mm -hmm. whom I love in truth mm -hmm. or in relationship. Full of love. Beloved, and this is our prayer for you this morning. Mm -hmm. As you are in this conference, yes. it's time to rise. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper mm -hmm. in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And there's so many nuggets just in that one scripture. There are. So here's my challenge. As you are going throughout your day and you're tuning in to It's Time to Rise, mm -hmm. you've already texted your girlfriend, you put your hashtags in the comments, hashtag It's Time to Rise, hashtag Rise Up. You're taking notes today because today's workshops are going to be the foundation for the work that God's going to get ready to do in your life. Make sure that you check your relationship with God. Find out if you're in the right spot with him. And yesterday you talked about call. Right? Mm -hmm. God calls us. Yes. This morning, God is calling you. And he wants to have a deeper relationship yes. with you. So, let's get to it. We have got five workshops that are going to take place today. Here's how you get to the workshops. Go to the website, mm -hmm. ITTHKC.com. It's running down at the bottom of the screen. Once you get there, you're going to click on links. And you'll have five options. And Gwen is going to give us a rundown of what those workshops are for you today. Yeah, so our five workshops for this morning. Um, Rise in Spirit, mm -hmm. Nadia. All the way from Columbia, South Carolina. Yes, yes. These are live workshops, guys. I don't know if you caught that. Like, we want you to get in it and be in it and yes. get all of it. Then we have Rise in Love. Rise in Love. Mm -hmm. Winter Williams. Yes, all the way from D.C. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And then rise in your finances. Yes. And we talked about that last night, about yeah. how important that is. Rhonda Hall. Yeah. She's amazing. Oh, CD. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Rise in mental health. Yes, yeah, Sade. Gar. Oh, my gosh. Sade Gar. Yeah. And rise in body and wellness. With Chioma. Chioma Autonomo yeah. is going to be our speaker there. You don't want to miss it. Mm. Like I said, text, DM, call, whatever you have to do, a friend. Get out there, register, and get into the workshops. Yes. You will not be You will not miss it. You do not want to miss yeah. it. So here it is, ladies. Mm -hmm. It's time to rise. You've got the first part of your Saturday morning devoted to the conference. Yes. The links are on the website, ITTHKC.com. And Gwen and I will see you when it's all over. But whatever you do, seek relationship today. Mm -hmm. God wants to have a relationship with you. See you later.
Sometimes, when God gives you an assignment, you don't know what all He wants you to do. Sometimes it sounds really crazy, and you know you are going to look foolish. But you know the voice of God, and it's time for you to rise. No matter what that assignment is, how far it takes you, soar. No matter how long it takes you to get it done, rise. No matter what other people say, elevate. When you don't have all the resources, think higher. When all the pieces aren't coming together, lift your head. When you doubt what he said, jump anyway. When you're running out of time, stay up late. When you're trying to pull it off, get up early. Tell your doubts, no. Tell your fears, no. Tell your friends and your family, no. Tell your circumstances, no. But whatever you do, you tell God, yes. Your yes to God is bigger than you. Your yes to God reaches further than you. Your yes to God goes beyond your abilities, your skills, and your talents. Your yes to God is God's opportunity to make himself known in the earth. God knows what he asked you to do. And no matter what, do it anyway. It's time to rise. So get up, shake yourself, shift your mind, and rise. Woman, rise. Good morning and welcome. I am so happy that you came back to stay with us today, to play with us, to learn and to grow. My name is Gwendolyn Holmes and I am honored to spend time with you today. I know for sure that when you leave this space, you will be changed. I wanna say a big thank you to Kira. Kira, thank you for saying yes to the vision that was in your heart your mind, and your spirit. As a result of you saying yes, our lives are going to be changed forever. I also want to thank every last one of you for joining us. As a woman, I know how precious Saturdays are. You have many things to do and you had many choices, but you chose to take time and spend it with us. But here's the bonus. You're not just spending time with us. You're actually spending time with yourself. You're getting reacquainted, getting to know yourself better. And more importantly, you are getting to spend time, intentional time with our father. He is with us always. And um, we've created a very special space. Um, This time is very sacred. And at the end of the day, we are going to rise. I am super excited about my assignment this morning, and I love assignments like these because they are all about changing lives. I get to play a tiny part in influencing and impacting positive change. So my purpose is all about causing others to rise, to elevate to their highest self, to their best self, to maximize their gifts and their talents and to take advantage of everything that God has placed inside of them to live out their purpose. As a matter of fact, my tagline is live life on purpose with purpose. And I'm super pumped that this morning, 
And I get to do exactly that. I get to live my life on purpose, with purpose, sharing time and space with you. My assignment, to be more specific, is to provoke. And the word provoke means to call forth an action. The word literally means to stir purposefully. So to stir with intent, to mess with, to move around, um, to provide a very needed stimulus. And this morning, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I promise you that when you leave this space, you will not feel the same. You will not think the same. You will be ready to move forward and rise because that's what we've all been called to do. And here's the beauty of our assignment as a whole this morning. For every last one of you who has chosen to join us this weekend, you won't rise alone. You are rising with us. We are rising together. And there's nothing stronger than sisterhood because when we lock arms, and we rise together, we are a force to be reckoned with. Nothing can stop us. So we're going to talk about rising. For a topic specifically, uh, I've chosen. It's a question. It's a question. Are you ready to rise? Are you ready to rise? That's my question to you. Ask yourself. Put your name in it. Gwen, are you ready to rise? Why did I choose to ask the question? Well, I don't think I chose. I think God is asking us, are we ready? Because here's the thing. Not only is he asking us, but he's actually calling us. He's saying, rise. And I'm going to show you how here in just a minute. But when we talk about rising, you can only think about a change in elevation because the actual definition of the word rise means to get up from or to assume an upright position. That's correct. To rise means to get up from, assume an upright position. An upright position from lying, from kneeling or sitting. And then I put my own spin. So I have my own definition uh, for the word arise. I call it the Gwen Home. Gwen Holmes version or the G Holmes version. It's um, to assume an upright position from waiting, wandering, thinking, and watching. See, the definition implies that there has been stillness of some sort, stillness in maybe a sitting stillness in maybe awaiting stillness in the in in, in us christians uh maybe a kneeled position a posture of prayer uh, uh maybe a bow down position where we're giving reverence but it maybe it there might even be a position of hesitation at the end of the day the call is to rise and the question that I have for you is, are you ready to rise? Are you ready to rise? So again, the definition suggests that we are being called from a position. It says to get up from a position. And I want to, I want to, I want to pause with the word hesitation. Pay attention to the word. It's at the bottom of your screen. Literally the word hesitation has the word sit right in the middle of it. He sit a tation. <laughs> a little Gwenism here. Um, suggesting that the pause that we all know that a hesitation is, a hesitation is a pause. I hesitated to move. I hesitated to speak. I hesitated to go forward. I hesitated to rise. But the word means to sit. So to hesitate means to sit. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that our father who loves us more than anything we could ever imagine is calling us to rise. He's calling us to get up from a position, whatever your position of waiting, of pausing, 
of hesitation might be. When I think about how much he loves us, my mind can't help to go back uh, help but to go back to the scriptures that are in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1, where he talks about, for I know, uh, well, excuse me, where he says, before I formed you, I knew you. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Meaning, before you even came into existence, I had a plan for you. See, each of us has a purpose. Each of us has an assignment. Each of us, we're here for an absolute reason. I don't care what has happened to this point. While I care, I understand that it does not impact where you'll go from here. It doesn't impact how high you'll rise, how far you'll go. But it has just been a piece that will play out in the rest of your journey. What I like even more is that in, in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he's speaking to Jeremiah. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. In the NIV, in, in international, NIV version, excuse me, um, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you to give you hope and a future. And in the old fashioned King James version, it says that plans to give you an expected end, meaning I have an expectation for you that far exceeds anything that you could ever think or imagine. And it is going to be good. But I want to talk about rising. But I wanted you to know that we're not rising alone and we're not rising uh, with a father who doesn't care. No, no, it's intentional. The call that he has made, the timing that he's made, the call in. See, we're living in one of the most unique times of all ages, certainly uh, for this dispensation, right? COVID-19, quarantine, uh, children uh, doing school at home, uh, uh, folks working remotely like across the board. We're living in a very unique time, but the call is still for us to rise. And when I think about elevation, when I think about rising, my mind goes back about four years. Our family decided to take a family vacation. We decided we would go to Pikes Peak in California. We'd go up the mountain. We'd see all that the beautiful splendor would offer. And as we journeyed up the mountain, there were some things we knew. And I want to talk a little bit about what one must do as you elevate. And I want to talk about some things that you need to know as you elevate. So I've got three things that you need to do. And attaching with those, I'm going to tell you some things that you should know. So the first thing that you should do is you should prepare. You should prepare. And in preparing, you should know some things. You should know that the air will be thin as you go up in elevation, that you will experience an atmospheric pressure change. There will be a there will be a thinning of air. You will, you will have less air to pull in, which means that your body will have to adjust. So you need to prepare. You need to know that this change is going to come. In addition to that, you need to understand as you prepare that everything in the atmosphere will be more intense. The environment will be much more intense than where you currently are as you elevate. See, we went up the mountain. We drove out of our city into the state of Colorado on to Pikes Peak. And as we migrated and moved on, our elevation was changing. Now, because we were driving, it was very gradual, our elevation. However, it was indeed changing. And we got to our destination and our little girl, she, she became ill. You see, rising has an effect on the body. Changing an elevation has an effect on the body and it is serious and it is intense. See, when we rise, when we exp experience a change in altitude, at best, it will be uncomfortable, but at its worst, it will be debilitating. See, when you begin to rise in the natural, when you begin to elevate in the natural, you may become lightheaded. Yeah, you may experience shortness of breath. You, you may become dehydrated. Your heart may 
palpitate. There might be pounding, pounding. You're trying to get the rhythm. Your body's trying to readjust because there's a change going on. Listen, I'm still talking about rising and the question still is, are you ready to rise? Rising is a beautiful thing. When we go higher, we see things differently. When we go higher, we have access to more things, but I want you to understand that you must prepare and you must know that there will be change as you rise. Your GI tract may be affected. It might experience distress, whether that is you vomiting or something coming the other way. You may experience a compromised performance. In other words, your ability to think and to track and to put thoughts and words together may be challenged. So we got to our elevated height, so to speak, where we were level for a while and we were doing just some random things. We we were about to, to go have dinner and all of a sudden we get to this amazing pizza place because one of the things we love to do is try uh, one of the things that we like in different cities. So pizza, well, let's go do something unique. We got to the restaurant, our daughter, she didn't want anything to eat. And we're thinking, are you sure? Do you, f I don't feel good. I don't feel good. My stomach hurts. Her GI, uh, uh, system was in distress. So thankfully the place, uh, we, we had a place nearby. We picked her up some chicken noodle soup and the rest of us, we enjoyed the pizza. And as we moved on to head to a store to get some more water, because we understood in prepare, preparing why we needed to hydrate as we drove. But once there, we, we understood even more so that we really needed to maintain our hydration. And we got there to the supermarket and lo and behold, she says, I feel sick and bam, she was throwing up. She was vomiting her GI tract. Her GI was in distress. Her, her stomach couldn't take any more. And, and this is what elevation can sometimes cause. And I know it sounds like it's grim and it's weary and it's dim, but it's not because the call is to elevate because God has something amazing for us. But I need you to understand that anything worth having will come with some sort of opposition and potential pressure. In addition to preparing, you've got to anticipate. Anticipate that the weather will change all the while you're moving up. One of the most beautiful, amazing, and even challenging things was that as we drove up the mountain, we experienced every single season. At the bottom of the mountain, it was in the upper 80s on the day we traveled up the mountain. And as we climbed the mountain, the temperature changed. Now, we knew that the climate and the environment would change as we went up. So we prepared the thing I told you to do in number one. We prepared. We, we brought coats and hats and gloves and um, we had our scarves. We were ready. We were ready because we knew that it would get cool as we went up the mountain. And although it was beautiful, we watched the thermostat in the car drop as we circled and went up and up and up. And eventually we made it to the top of the mountain and it was beautiful and we could look out and we could see the horizon and all the amazing things that God had made. We could see it. But then all of a sudden there was a shift and the wind began to blow and it picked up and it got so cold and it was frigid and it was, oh my goodness, we're glad we prepared and we brought our hats and we brought the things that we needed. But we noticed that as we put our foot, or excuse me, as we put our feet out of the car and as we began to walk, we noticed number three, that we had to slow down. We had to slow down as we were driving up and we had to slow down when we got out because we could feel the pressure change. We could feel that the air was thin. We could feel that we should be cautious as we moved. But we literally anticipated climate change and we got it. Let me tell you that while we were on the top of that mountain for a very brief period of time, the wind picked up, the temperature dropped dramatically. And before you knew it, we saw snow falling in the middle of summer. It was the middle of summer. I believe we traveled early June. 
and it was snow falling at the top of the mountain. And it was beautiful, but it was all a part of elevation. And there were people who didn't have coats and they were running inside to, to the tourist uh, shop that was at the top of the mountain. But we were prepared so we could stand out on the edge and look over and take pictures and smile and talk until we couldn't take it anymore because we prepared. We prepared for the journey of elevating and rising. We anticipated that we'll, there would be climate change. And once we stepped out, we were we slowed down. As a matter of fact, we had to go very slow as we were driving up the mountain. These are just a few of the things that you will have to remember as you elevate. And for scripture today, I want to um, turn our attention uh, briefly to John. We're going to look at John, the fifth chapter, and I'm going to show you um, John, the fifth chapter, verse number one, and we are going to read it uh, this morning in the Message Bible. And I chose the message because I love the way it reads. So here it is. Here it is. Soon another feast came around and Jesus was back in Jerusalem near the sheep gate in Jerusalem. There was a pool. In Hebrew called Bethesda. With five cloves, alcoves, hundreds of sick people, blind, crippled, paralyzed, were in these alcoves. One man had been there. One man had been an invalid there for 38 years. 38 years. When Jesus saw him stretched out by the pool and knew how long he had been there, he said, do you want to get well? Now, remember, I posed a question to you. My question was very simple. Are you ready to rise? Jesus asked the man, do you want to get well? The man had been coming to this pool. This pool of Bethesda uh, was a very unique place. A phenomenon would occur. An angel would come down and touch the water. The water would begin to stir, to swirl, to bubble, to spin. And the first to get in the water, the first of these uh, sick and crippled and paralyzed, the first to get into the water would be healed. And after that, the phenomenon was over. Jesus knew this man's state before he even showed up, before he ever came to the pool, before he walked through any of the gates. He knew this man's condition because it says in the scripture, scripture and knew how long he had been there. May I share with you, there's nothing that pertains to you that God doesn't already know about. I'm talking about rising. I'm talking about elevating. I'm talking about answering the call because there is a call this morning. There's a call to rise, rise to the next level, rise to the next assignment, to step forward. And Jesus had one question, knowing all about the situation. He had one question. He said, do you want to get well? Do you want to rise? And listen to this. The sick man said, sir, when the water is stirred, I don't have anybody to put me in the pool. By the time I get there, somebody else is already in. Now, I want you to pay attention. This man did not answer the question. The question was, do you want to get well? Now, if I had been sick for 38 years and someone asked me, do you want to get well? I would think my answer would be yes. But here's the thing. Sometimes we get comfortable because we have been sitting for so long. We have been hesitating for so long. We've been waiting for so long. We've been thinking 
praying, wandering, watching. But Jesus wanted to know, are you ready to rise? Well, well, Lord, every time I get ready to rise, something happens. I, I want to rise, but but, but 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 things keep coming up. What I love about Jesus was when he came, he came on assignment. He came on a mission and he is our primary example of how we should live out our lives and our assignments. Jesus bypassed. He bypassed the excuse. He bypassed the conversation. And Jesus said, get up, take up your, your, your bedroll, start walking. The man was healed on the spot. He got up and he went on his way. Listen, in order to rise, you are going to have to be resilient. You are going to have to be resilient. Resilience means that you are able to keep going in the face of difficulty. What I like about the man, even though he didn't respond the right way, he was resilient. He kept going in the face of difficulty. He didn't give up. He didn't stop. He kept coming to the pool. It's funny in the scripture where I'm not even so sure that the man's faith is on display. See, sometimes in the church and in our Christian world, we use jargon where we just have to have faith. I believe his faith was shown by his resilience to keep coming back year after year after year. Resilience. The ability to keep going in the face of difficulty. The ability to bounce back when challenged with adversity. The ability to manage negative emotions effectively rather than letting them send you into a downward spiral. I'm talking about resilience. Women, women, as we rise, as we get up, as we move, as we take on ownership of who we are and the assignments and the purpose and the calls on our lives, as we begin to be boss women in our homes, that means we're submitted to the covering of our husbands if we have one or submitted to the covering of God if we don't. And we're taking care of our children as we're rising in the workplace and assuming the right positions that we have been given. I wonder, can you dig deep and find resilience? Do you have the ability to stand in the face of adversity? Do you have the ability to keep pressing. Oh, I'm going to tell you that you do. And today I'm asking you, are you ready to rise? But listen to me. Here's what Jesus is saying to you. He's saying, get up, get up, get up and fold up, put away your excuses, put away your hesitation and go on your way and do the thing that I've called you to do. That's what he's asking us to do today. And he's not asking us to do it alone. You are sitting in the company of great women. You will have to be resilient in order to fulfill your purpose. You will have to be present and show up as he's calling you, calling you in every area of your life. This morning, as we go out into our workshops, you're going to talk about love. You're going to talk about your mental health. You're going to talk about your physical body. You're going to talk about your spirituality. You're going to talk about your money. There's not an area of your life that we're going to leave untapped because the Lord wants to know, will you rise? It's time for us to rise. There is work that we have to do. You know, I thought about rising and I said, man, some people, and you're going to recognize this phrase, have a fear of heights. Why are they afraid of the heights? What is it about the height that causes the fear? The reality is rising is scary. The reality is rising will require more of you. But remember that before you were formed, he knew you. And remember that the plans that he has for you are good to bring you to an expected end. As I get ready to leave you this morning, I want to tell you that be resilient because it is time to rise. It is time to rise in every area of your life. 
And because this whole thing, this It's Time to Rise conference began as a result of Kira saying yes to writing a novel, I Am Ruth and Everything Is Not Okay. We have to go back to the book of Ruth before we end. Now, I don't have time to read you the entire story. I recommend that you read the Bible version and please get the novel. Get the novel. You won't be disappointed. Kira, you did an amazing job with putting that modern day version or modern day account of Ruth together. But in the book of Ruth, we see the story of Ruth. Ruth has with her mother-in-law, Naomi and, or and Orpah, and they all lose their husbands. Their husbands die. Naomi, the mother-in-law, she loses her husband. Ruth, Orpha, they lose their spouses. And they're in a land far from where Naomi first started. And they have nothing. They have lost at a high level. Some of you have lost at a high level. Lost at a deep level, lost in a deep place. Some of you have lost yourselves in raising your families. Some of you have lost yourselves in trying to find the career that would fit and suit. Some of you lost yourselves when you went off to college trying to conform and transform and be. Some of you lost yourself trying to serve in the house of God. But it was never his desire for you to have great loss that would not yield great gain. And I'm going somewhere with this. You see, these three women had lost everything. And the question then became what to do now? Well, they had to choose to rise. They had to get up from a position in order to move on and listen to the story. Naomi decided, you know what? I'm going back to my native country because I hear that there's food there. I hear that I can survive there. I've got kinsmen there. They know me. I'll be able to reestablish myself and get myself going. So she plans to head back to her, her native land. Ruth says, I'm going with you. Wherever you go, that's where I'm going. And, and, and Orpah says the same thing. And Naomi says, no, no, no. I don't want you to come back with me because I can't give you any more sons. I, if you come, there's no, there's no reason for you to come with me. But Ruth says, no, 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 no. I'm with you. I'm stuck with you. And I'm going where you go. When they arrive back to the country, they're starting from scratch. They don't have anything. Some of you have nothing or you feel you have nothing. But I am telling you, you have something because he the great creator, the great provider, the healer, the deliverer. He is always with us. His word says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. The lie in 2020 is that in isolation, we're alone, but there's no such thing because he is ever present. He is always with us. So these ladies have lost it all. And Ruth goes with Naomi and they return back to Naomi's homeland and they come up with a plan. God always has a plan. What I came to understand several months ago is that there is always a next. Yeah, there's always a next. Even in quarantine, there's always a next. Even in isolation, there is always a next. Even in losing your job, there's an awful, always a next. But here's the big one. Even in death. Yes, I'm talking to you. Even with the loss of a loved one which I have experienced this year. There is always a next. See, God has a plan to take you from where you are to the next level of where he wants you to be. There is always a next. And so as those ladies planted their feet in the new territory, in the new land, in the home that they would then begin to build, God began to unveil the plan. And Ruth was poised enough. She was wise enough to listen to the voice of wisdom, which was the voice of Naomi. And she went to the fields and she gleaned and she found favor 
And that favor continued to elevate. And before she knew it, she found herself married and taken care of. And as a result, they were both taken care of, not taken care of on any level, but taken care of on a level higher than where they were before. Because God knew that it was time for them to rise. Am I saying that he is the author of loss? Absolutely not. His word tells us in, in uh, Third James that he wants us to prosper. He wants us to rise and be in health. But sometimes setbacks will come and they will appear to be devastating. But I don't want you to focus on what you can see. I want you to focus on what you can hear. And this morning, I want you to hear, daughter, son, beloved, beautiful, sunshine, it is time to rise. It's time to rise. My name is Gwendolyn Holmes. It has been good to be with you this morning. I am going to say a quick prayer as I release you to go into your various workshops, know this, he is with us always. Father, I thank you for every woman who has been with us this morning to hear the clarion call that they must prepare, anticipate, and slow down because you are calling them to rise. You're causing them to rise in every area of their lives. Now I pray that they would heed the call and begin to rise and to move. Again, it's been beyond my pleasure. If you would like to spend more time with me after the conference, you can find me on Facebook at Gwendolyn Holmes Global. You can also uh, reach out to me or follow me on Instagram at G Holmes Global. At my website, there's a way to get in contact with me. But if you would like to contact me directly for speaking um, engagements or possible opportunities, you can do that at GwenSpeaks at Outlook.com. Again, it's been a pleasure. I know your life is going to be changed forever. No matter what you do, remember this. Remember this. It is time for you to rise. Voices Magazine, and Voices Magazine is an online magazine for voices of sexual abuse survivors. So one out of every three girls and one out of every five boys will be sexually abused before they reach the age of 18. And unfortunately, that's only the people that tell. So if you want to go by true statistics, I'm sure it is much more than that. But at Voices Magazine, we want to change the narrative because there is life after trauma. And in our magazine, you will hear stories of many of survivors that has not only have overcome, but now they are thriving and living a life of victory. So please check out our magazine. It is a quarterly magazine, and it's at issue.com slash Voces LLC, and that's I-S-S-U-U dot com slash Voces, V-O-S-O-A-S L-L-C dot com. You will find many stories, um, and not only of just survivors, but we have a counselor's corner, and we have a healthy living section, and a spotlight. So we like to, like to spotlight many organizations or people that are doing things in the community that's going to help for recovery. But if you are a survivor, you do not have to continue to live in that life. Your life can get so much better, and healing is possible. So please, our magazine is here to inform, encourage, and empower, and we're here to change the narrative. So go to issue.com slash Voces LLC and you will get all the information that you need and if you have any questions please contact us and we'll be glad to talk to you more about the magazine.
Well guys, listen, I just want to tell you thanks so much for attending It's Time to Rise. This year was definitely a pivot year for all of us and I want you to know that it would not have been possible without so many people that were involved in the planning and the orchestrating of this conference. You know, sometimes God asks us to do difficult things, but he always surrounds us with a team of people to make sure that we get it done. And I don't want to miss anyone's name, but I do have to name a few folks that really hung in there with me and made this weekend exactly what it was. I want to give a shout out to my daughter, Maria. She does so much behind the scenes and a lot of times she never gets the credit. So shout out to Maria McConico. Also have to shout out my great guest host, my co-host, Gwendolyn Holmes, all the way from Omaha, Nebraska. She's been hanging with me on our lives since April of this year. It's hard to believe that. I also want to thank Spirit Life Event Center. We were able to go there last weekend and film a lot of this, what you saw uh, right there with Deborah Rourke. So if you're looking for a great place to host your next event, check out Spirit Life Center over in Shawnee Mission, Kansas. We also want to thank Mac Images for all of the videography that they provided. And last but not least, we also want to thank you. We want to thank you because it's your support that keeps people like me saying yes to God. You you know, it's only because of your support that makes me even feel like I can still get up and go after all the things that I've been through this year. So I definitely want you to know that you can keep up with me online at kirasheree.com. Kira means shining light and Sheree means beloved. If you have any questions, you can find us on Facebook as well. And you can certainly stop and join our Rising Roofs Facebook group where we have all of the nuggets and all of the good stuff every day for women who are trying to elevate themselves. So no matter what you do, I pray, just like we started in 3 John 2, beloved, above all things, I pray that you would prosper even as your soul prospers and that you would be in health because this is the time. This is the time for you to rise. God bless you. It's time for your workshops. So here's how you get to the workshop links. Stop what you're doing and go to www.ithkc.com. Once you're on our website, you will see a link that says workshop links. You click on that link and then you can choose which workshops you want to zoom right into. Remember, those workshops are live and they're gonna start right at 10 o'clock. We have got some amazing women that are going to give you the best in their field, the best in their knowledge base, the best in their spirit to help you to rise. So stop right now, go to ITTHKC.com and click on the workshop link tab. Once you're there, you will see all of the choices from all of our workshop presenters. You'll have an opportunity to rise in love with Winter Williams rise in your spirit with Nadia Seeger. You also have an opportunity to rise in your mental health with Sade Gar. You're going to be able to rise in your finances. All about that money with Rhonda Hall. You have an opportunity to rise in your body and in your wellness with none other than Chioma Atanmo. Remember, in order to partake in the Zoom links, you have to go to our website, ITTHKC.com, click on the workshop links and get ready to Zoom in with ladies all across the country who are just like you. They are ready to rise. Go now, find the workshop of your choice, and whatever you do, make sure that you are elevated in your mind and in your thoughts and in your actions. It's time for you to rise.